Welcome to another edition of the Ballot Power Show. I am your host, Tijan Ba. This is the show that seeks to enhance the credibility of the constitutional review process. And with me to discuss this important um, issue uh, is Honorable Usman Silla. Uh, Honorable Usman Silla is the uh, mem- National Assembly member for Banjul North, and he also doubles as the chairperson, Select Committee on Health women, children, disaster, humanitarian relief, and refugees. Uh, welcome to the show, Honorable Silla. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you once again on Sahel Network TV. Uh, so let's talk about the, the, the whole process. Um, uh, what do you think about the work of the CRC in the first place? Well, uh, thank you very much. CRC was given the, the task by the National Assembly through uh, an act of parliament that uh, establishes it and clearly stipulates its mandate that it is to review the existing constitution, engage in consultations both inside and outside of the country, uh, look for materials outside in terms of constitutions in order to develop a draft constitution and also prepare a report to present it to the President and the National Assembly for consideration. Uh, and then uh, they were able to fulfill that mandate, uh, presented a draft report, and, a, and, and the draft constitution and a report to the Assembly. Uh, of course, to the President first, who did not touch it, and then just passed it on to the National Assembly uh, to to, 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 to make a decision, to take a decision, so to speak. Uh, as I said, they've, they've fulfilled the mandate, they've done that, they've started that mandate, that responsibility. Uh, it was up to the National Assembly to make a decision on it, and they did make a decision, and the decision was to reject it. Uh, and this happened, uh, of course, uh, uh, because according to the Constitution, uh, it required a percentage, uh, uh, three quarters of the National Assembly uh, has to support the bill for it to proceed. Mm-hmm. We started at the uh, a process, you know, the Assembly, there are processes, spaces. It started with the first reading where the clerk announced the introduction of the bill. And then uh, we have a second reading where uh, National Assembly members who wish to contribute are allowed to debate on the merits and the principles of the bill, nothing other than that. And this we did, uh, it was supposed to pass through the stage to another stage called consideration stage, where we would have been dealing with it in details, that is chapter by chapter, clause by clause. Uh, but it was aborted at the second reading when uh, members were allowed to make positions. Uh, based on the well, on the principles and merits of the of the of the, of the draft constitution, uh, so it was very unfortunate that it uh, did not proceed. If it had proceeded, at least to the to the to the stage uh, consideration stage, because if you look at the the discussion, uh, the position of the members, both those who were in, in support of it and those who opposed it. Basically, all of them said they are in support of a new constitution. But that, those that oppose it said, unless their concerns are addressed, they would not support it. And uh, the stage where the concerns would have been addressed, they did not even allow it to reach that stage. So that's the unfortunate part of it. So at least they could have, one can reject it, they have the right. Uh, because the National Assembly gave the CRC the task, so it was up to the National Assembly to approve or not to approve. Mm-hmm. But we expected that uh, everybody was going to approve this because we were all, of course, there is no other National Assembly member who said uh, they did not need a new Gambia. So, uh, but the new Gambia cannot come into being without a new constitution. So this was the this was the objective. In fact, it was part of the coalition agenda, the coalition that brought about the change in 2016, that uh, once there is change, we're going to institute reforms. And key among those reforms was the constitutional uh, exactly. reform, yeah. and that that that, that cannot uh, take place, that cannot happen without the new constitution. And this was the result why this was the reason why the CRC was constituted and given the mandate 
and they did, did, did they did fulfill their mandate it was up to the national assembly to, to pass it through okay so there's the crc there is the commission and the national assembly uh, but there's also an important element in the whole equation uh, so the people before we come back to the vote let's talk about the people and the consultation let's first talk about the the crc um, in your own view uh, we are the people consulted well enough before they came up with the draft well i believe that the people were consulted uh, well enough it was an extensive uh, uh, consultation and it was not only limited to the gambia they did reach out to the, to the diaspora and uh, you can even see it in their report uh, that uh, they have been engaging the population to get their views on the new constitution, on the existing one and on the new constitution. What do they, do they need in terms of a constitution for the country? And the consultations we are done, you can, it is clearly indicated in their report that they did uh, this consultation. <clears throat> in fact, even the National Assembly, we are consulted uh, and that, uh, to, to get our views on the stage. We did share our views. Uh, whether it is enough, well, that's also something one can discuss. After the completion of the exercise, but I mean, when they have prepared their report, uh, was there any need for them to consult? I think yes, and this is what they did not do. They should have, you know, engaged uh, the, the media, electronic print, going to communities, what they had done during the pre constitution development phase. They should have done that uh, in the post uh, com completion of the constitution, post, post, post development stage, uh, to inform the public, because that is what has happened in the 1996 constitution. Halifa Sala was very instrumental, he has been using the radio, so people were really sensitized on the, the, new, con the new constitution, the, that is the existing one, before its promulgation. So they should have done that same thing uh, this time round. Uh, but did not happen. Uh, I think if they had done that, and in, then after that they bring it to the National Assembly, uh, then uh, I think uh, perhaps the, the result would have been different. Okay, so it was, it was then um, uh, passed to the President and the President eventually um, took it to the National Assembly and there was a vote and it was rejected. Um, you, you are also a member of Parliament and you have also voted. Um, so we understand that you voted for the um, constitution to be passed. Um, what are your reasons um, for, for voting yes? I was uh, very much part of the coalition movement that brought forward the chain. I was one of the, the, the players. Uh, my party was also one of the players, principal actors. And uh, as I said, as I indicated earlier, uh, it was one of the agenda, the agenda items, the objectives of the coalition, the parties coming together. That we are coming together to first and foremost bring about change, for the people will vote for change, they will change the government. And then after that, what we can do, because these are different political parties with different programs, perhaps different objectives, but they are, uh, we can have a common denominator. There are certain things that we can share in common and all agree to. to and one of them is having a new constitution because we have seen the existing one, the, how it uh, has been diluted in terms of its uh, intris intrinsic democratic you know, credentials. Uh, you know, a lot of changes have been effected on it. There are, uh, there are certain provisions that, uh, that, that help engender democracy that we are removed, like the second round of voting. And uh, you have obnoxious provisions that came to empower only one person exactly. uh, and not the people. So it was just a question of, you know, looking at it or every, anything that is removed from it and that is good, we bring it back. Anything that is obnoxious, that, is, that, 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 that hinders uh, the, 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 the democratic space, the widening of the democratic space, the empowerment of the people, we, we expunge, we remove. So in fact, this was our position. When it was brought to, to the National Assembly for us to pass the act, the CRC act, my agreement and the members of my party uh, was that uh, there's a shorter route. It's just a question of looking at the document. It's as simple as that, looking at the document. Because in every constitution, you have two parts. You have entrance clauses, that is, these are provisions that cannot be changed by a parliament, mm -hmm. only the people, and that goes through a referendum. But there are also provisions that can be changed by a parliament. So we look at those provisions that can be changed by a parliament. If we wish to make them entrance, we can do so. But then there, we must take them to a referendum. But like, the good ones that we are removed, we bring them back. 
the bad ones that are, we are injected, we remove them. And not only that, because you are talking about a wall. Democracy is everybody's property. It's not owned by the West. It's not owned by Africa. It's not owned sure. by Asia. Sure. It's, uh, no, it's not governance. And it's the best practice of governance as far as we are concerned. Yeah. Unless something superior comes in the future. But as, as of now, there is nothing more, uh, more, more helpful to development that empowers the people, that recognizes the importance of people in participating exactly. in the process. So coming to the importance of people, uh -huh. I will quote you in one of your interviews that you have with Sahel TV. Um, that is that you mentioned the Gambia have a leadership problem and also an, unlight, an unenlightened population. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, observers will also say that this draft constitution was supposed to take power from state house and give it to the people. Um, so do you think also the parliamentarians themselves, um, the members of parliament, um, consulted their, their constituents um, because they are representation of, uh, representatives of the people. Did you think they consulted the people before they voted? Well, I, that I don't know, uh, because uh, I, I'm not sure whether that's necessary, because the consultation should have been done by the CRC, and that was demanded for them to do the consultation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought that uh, people would have been well sensitized about the need for a new reality, a gov new governance environment that empowers them, that creates institutions that would allow them to participate in decision making in the development process that is also help them to bring about development, improve their conditions of living, improve their life livelihood. Uh, we thought that a constitution can do that because it is going to be the foundation of building that kind of environment, that kind of system. Uh, so uh, National Assembly members could have consulted their, their, their constituencies. For me, I did not have the time to go and consult my constituency. But I felt that my deposition I took serves the best interest of the Gambian population. Uh, uh, that, so that, that's, as far as that is concerned, I think uh, that, is, that, is, that is how I view okay. the, the issue. Right. But uh, like I said, people uh, were consulted prior to the development of the draft. I, see, I believe that they should have been consulted okay. after the development of the draft so that uh, no National Assembly member would go and then you know, say something different. Uh, you will know what they, they serve their interest because I believe they would. Uh, this does not mean that the constitution is perfect. For me, I have some issues exactly. which I wanted them to address. Yes. So we will come to those issues. Okay. Um, so, okay, let's talk about some of those issues. Um, there were issues that um, people felt uh, they, some people had an agenda to you know, misconceptualize some of the issues. Um, one of them is uh, the issue of gay marriage. Uh, the issue of the term limit of the presidency and you know the issue of, of, of citizenship so let's talk about these issues um, what are your, your views on some of these issues in fact uh, the issue with the CRC uh, with regards to citizenship when they consulted the majority of people that they consulted said that any person who's born in the country should be a citizen and this is my position and that is what the people the majority of Gambians that is what they, mm -hmm. they said so any assembly member who comes and says that you are promoting the interests of the people and then saying something different, you are not really uh, reflecting the reality on the ground. This is shown by this year. But of course, CRC also, they should have concluded that yes, uh, this is what the people want. That any person who is born in the country must not be allowed to be stateless, must be granted citizenship. But the argument of the CRC, I think from few they've consulted, not the majority, is that the Gambia does not have resources, these resources are scarce, if it's scarce if you allow that everybody, particularly because for them I believe it's the sub-region, but these are Africans, we are talking about Africa, we are Pan-Africanists, how can we come closer together? Uh, if it were uh, conditions we are in, like non-Africans, non-West Africans, one can understand, but you know, African, we're talking of Senegalese brother, Nigerian, Malayan, Sierra Leonean, the Mauritanian, these are Africans, so, you know, uh, Guinean, so, so for me, I don't think uh, that, is, that, that that argument is tenable. Uh, they should have uh, supported that. With regards to gay marriage, I think these are people who are just, uh, they want to oppose and then they come up with any pretext. That's not the reality. There is no question that promotes that. In fact, what the draft is saying is exactly what the Contract Commission is saying. If they, if they believe that the draft is saying that it's promoting gay marriage, then the existing one is, pre because it's the same text. It's the same text. They came up with something when there was outcry. They, it's the same text. What happened is that with the previous one, it was divided into two. This time around, they, 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 they lumped it up. There is no changes, nothing. If they are honest, if anybody is honest who's arguing that, go and revisit it. 
that's not a serious argument and not a serious argument there mr by honorable Silla. so let's talk on the 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 the, the term limit of the presidency uh, we see that um, the, the the executive was alleged to have um, to have influenced the, the vote um, because um, because of the, the complaint in the first place by the executive that the constitution discriminated the president so let's talk about that now discrimination is when you have a right when you acquire a right and they deny you that right that's discrimination or to treat persons differently as far as i'm concerned uh, what right are they depriving the president in terms of uh, the, the term limit? Because I think, uh, well, we have now come to the situation where people have seen that uh, perpetuating oneself in office ends up uh, not uh, serving the interests of the population. Even the person, I look at all those what they're calling dictators, that overstate, how they ended up. They ended up in a disgrace. So term limit, in essence, it's, it's necessary because it's not only one person who can run a country. In fact, when even you are, you are head of state, you, are, you cannot run a country singly. Even if you are a dictator, they will say you are doing this, you are doing it. but it's the people who are doing it. You have lackeys who are helping you to do that. I mean a dictator, you have lackeys, survive people who would come and then opportunists who would come and prop you up. But in actual fact, it's people that are doing it. Of course, some decisions are coming from you, but they're the ones who actually execute the decision. So no one person can run a country. So democracy is saying that as somebody, when you're in that that office, that that, that particular position, uh, in the United States it's, it's eight years, four years plus another four years, and that's the end of it. United, Nelson Mandela did it once, only four years, and then stuff there. Did that rob Mandela of his reputation, of his respect? No. Never mind his experience, what he has sacrificed, his life, everything, just for the liberation of South Africa. But the five years, he was able to accomplish a lot. So I believe that uh, just come serve and then leave exactly. and then somebody else comes. Exactly. So like I said, uh, the, the, that, that's not an argument. And then uh, time limit, I think everybody would accept time limit. Uh, I've not seen anywhere that, uh, uh, that uh, time limit definitely does not, does not serve the interest of the population. And well, the president is the president. He's elected for five years. Of course, in our agreement, with, at the level of the coalition, we agreed for three years. But that is history. Anyway, constitutionally, he's, he's, not, he's not doing anything in contravention of the constitution if he stays for five years, and that's what he did. But for him to have another, for the constitution to say that no person should be president consecutively, consecutive two terms, I think that is very beautiful in terms of democracy. Okay, so from, from those, from the contentious issues, let's, let's talk about some of the progressive issues also in the draft. Um, you are the select uh, chairperson of the select committee on health, uh, women, children, and children. So um, the, the draft have provisions for women representation. Um, there's a, a percentage for youth representation also, even in, at the level of the political parties. People will, with disabilities also, and the increase in human rights from 17 to 38 uh, clauses. Um, what's your take on this, on the, on the, on the progressive nature of the draft, um, looking at some of these um, um, very progressive clauses? Yes, in fact, uh, that's the reason why I voted yes. I voted for it to pass because if you put it on a scale to weigh the advantages and the, and the disadvantages, the disadvantages, uh, the advantages are more than the disadvantages. And like I said, it's not a perfect document. There are so many issues there that I challenge. I would want to see out, remove from the, the, the statute, the book. But uh, we can forge ahead with it. And then, if we had allowed it to go to that phase, as, as I told you, consideration stay. The whole house would have been considering it, and me members would have been, you know, coming up with their positions. And we could have been doing back and forth, compromising here and there. You may not got all. But at least, at least something satisfactory. We would have been able to reach uh, at a conclusion that you know would be a win-win for all because you will not have everything that you wanted, but at least you will have something that you know is good for the country. Mm -hmm. So this is the progressive elements that are in the constitution, like you're talking about women, mm -hmm. giving a fair share of representation, youth, giving a fair share of representation, mm -hmm. the disabled, giving fair share of representation, being covered. These are the good things. These are some of the positive things that are in the question that is motivated me to, to vote, for, for, vote for it. Oh, okay, of course, okay. Yeah, I'm afraid we don't have more time. So, um, 
finally, what was the way forward? Um, do we bring back the draft and, and change some of the clauses, or do we go back and maintain the 1997 constitution and uh, let's say change the so-called laws um, in 30 seconds? Well, in the so-called uh, well, the, the approach I believe is to have a new constitution. We cannot definitely proceed without a new constitution. Either coming back with the whole thing, or at least uh, coming back with the pro progressive things in the, in the existing one, as we as we suggested initially. And this can be done. The term limit, women representation, youth representation, disability. These are things that we can bring. And then anything that is there that needs to be taken to the people in a referendum, we can also do that. But we really need the way forward is that we need a constitution other than this existing one. It can be an improved version of the existing one, but nothing other than that. Nothing less than anything other than less than that. Is that something good for the Gambia? That cannot usher in the third republic that we are all yearning for. We need a new Gambia, and that is the third republic that we all want to realize. And it cannot, we cannot realize it in the absence of a constitution. There you have it from Honorable Silla. We need a new constitution. We need a new Gambia. And we definitely have to have a new constitution. Um, it's a pleasure having you on the ballot power, so Honorable Silla. I'm your host, Tijanba. Until we come your way next time. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Tijan.